Hi, I'm Morgan. This is my rocket, the Spread Eagle, and today I'm going to land on the chopsticks on the launch tower, just like SpaceX. So I've been working on this project for over a year now. I was working with the astronaut Dennis Tito on a thrust vector control model rocket. This rocket here has two servos to control the direction of the motor thrust. So that's what steers the rocket. The, the tail fins here, they're just decoration so that the motor can uh, steer the rocket. And Dennis asked me, what if we had two motors? What if we took two motors like this, making lots of thrust, and we turn them like this? Now they're making zero thrust. Isn't that going to make it possible to land on the launch tower the same way that SpaceX does? So this is a landing of Starship flight number seven, booster number 14, Starship number 33. The last part of the landing is done entirely with the thrust vector control from the engines, liquid fuel engines that have a throttle control, obviously. As it aligns with the tower for catch. Booster coming in. Down ready to for that boom, Kate. Down to three engines. So this is what I've come up with. This is the Spread Eagle rocket because it's able to spread the motors. Get it? Cool joke, yeah. I got better jokes coming. So this rocket has a little GPS at the top here. GPS looks like this. This is able to measure its position to within eight millimeters when it gets updates from a base station. So it can measure movements as small as this. So that's in the top of the rocket here. So with that knowledge of where we are and the motors that enable us to go where we want to go, now I have the technology available to land back on the launch tower. I call the launch tower the Ill Eagle Integrated Launch and Landing Platform. And this has a GPS antenna on the top, which is sending correction data to the rocket GPS. And the rocket computer now knows where it is. So 200 times per second, the rocket computer looks at where it is and moves the motors to go where it wants to go. Coming off the pad, the two motors ignite at slightly different times. In fact, one motor may fail to ignite completely. So it climbs up to about 10 meters altitude and stabilizes itself in steady hovering flight at that altitude. Then it'll move over two meters to the chopstick side of the tower, descends down and then has a programmed final approach where it approaches to the chopsticks that grab it. And I'm quite happy with the way my chopsticks mechanism works because it's able to grab the rocket wherever it is. If it's on one side, the other side chopstick comes over to grab it. If it's on the other side, this side will come and close on it. So wherever it lands, wherever it comes into the tower, it's able to grab that where it is totally passively. I'm not using any active control on the chopsticks grippers. So let's watch the complete flight. So up it goes to 10 meters altitude, stable, moves over two meters, comes down nine meters, stops there. Now it begins the final approach, descending slowly in and grab. Hooray, it's done. Oh, it landed. Fantastic. Oh, Look at that, just landed the model rocket exactly like SpaceX does. Fantastic! <laughs> so when it landed, this motor cut out early and this one was still firing for a second or two after the landing. We can see that it's pointed basically straight up at the pivot here. So as it was swinging, it was using this motor to swing back this way, swing that way, controlling itself even after the landing. It had to control the position of that motor so that it was stable on the pivot there. But yeah, success.
Three, two, one. <laughs> So put your questions in the comments below, subscribe to the channel and fly safe.